Are you tired of struggling with complicated softwares just to add some nice animated text to your renders? Well, fear not my friends, because I have some exciting news for you. Introducing Textify, the all new text animated tool for Blender that will revolutionize the way you add text animations to your projects. I spent the last month perfecting this tool and I'm so excited to show you how it works. So let's dive in and explore the amazing features of Textify. You go to Edit, Preferences, then go to File Paths, Asset Libraries option. So you're going to have to click plus here. Go to the folder where you downloaded the file. You have to extract the file and select the folder in here. Click Add Asset Library. Now you can just drag and drop right here. So first I'm going to try and explain all the features with this simple example. And if you go to the Modifier section, we have all these values that you can change and tweak to customize this whole thing. So the most important value right here is the animate all button. If you just slide that, it will animate everything. But we're going to talk about these things later. First, let's go to the edit mode and understand this thing a little bit. So right here, I have this geometry. If I turn off my geometry nodes, I have these vertices in my scene and they make up the whole thing. If I turn that on and move these vertices around, you can see what it does. A cool thing about this text is if I move these vertices, the text will automatically center itself but of course you can change the offset from here now the next thing is the pointer line settings this will look like that which is a simple one but if i hit shift e on this edge you can see what it does it gives it a sci-fi kind of look and gives it some randomness with the radius and if you pay attention you can see we have three vertex groups right here so if i go to the background and hit select you can see it will select my background so keep in mind that this is our background this is our pointer line the lines that have these uh, dots right here and this kind of wavy effect going on on this it will be the pointer line you're gonna have to mark it as a pointer so for example if i'm adding in an edge here so i'm gonna assign it as a pointer so if i assign it we have this dot right here but if it's not a pointer you're gonna leave it like that remove it from this one and you're gonna remove it from everything right here and this will be a simple line but if you go right here and you subdivide this line now we have two edges in there and I hit shift E on this you can see we have some interesting things happening but now let's talk about the other features the first button right here is the viewport performance I really don't like a laggy viewport so if you turn this button on it will just make a very simple version of this whole thing I have uh, optimized it a lot and it plays in real time very fast with full FPS but in case your scene gets laggy you can turn this on and it will be simpler if you turn this on and you render a frame from here so it only affects your report then one more thing we have here is the stick to button so let's say if you have a monkey right here I'm gonna stick this call out to the monkey so we'll scale this up a little bit rotate this right here we want to specify a face for this to stick it to so i'm gonna hit tab go to the faces right here and select this face then go to the vertex groups create a new one and name it as s or anything you want i'm gonna assign this here now if i come right here to the callout and select my monkey stick it to that and point name it is our vertex group that we created in the monkey so type s here it's stuck to that thing right there now you can do rotations rx90 and that's it and if you want to move it you're gonna have to go to the edit mode and then hit G just like that but you can rotate it in the object mode right there and now if you rotate the monkey you can see it's stuck right here and yeah it looks like it's tracking the thing now I'm gonna turn off the sticking so let's just remove that now we have the animation tab which the first slider right here is used for the animation as you saw before and the second one is the, for the offset for example if your animation looks like this the background is already disappeared and the line is starting a bit late so what you're gonna do is just slide this value around until you find the best offset like this for your animation and then we have the more types so this is a very cool feature that I've added so if you turn that on and then you have all these animation types this is how they look like while animating and it uses the same value just like that 
and you can scroll through them there's like 15 of them right here and whenever you're adding another material for the background or choosing some other materials that uh, you want you have to go to that material and always after you edit your material you have to add this group right there then the more types will work because this is the thing that creates the disappearing effect there one more important feature that i've added it is a very small detail but it helps a lot if you want to create a right side version of this you just have to duplicate that along the x-axis now as you may think i'm just gonna use the old way and scale x negative one which never works you can see the text is flipped and there's no way we can correct that but i've added a cool hidden feature in there so if you go to the edit mode you select the pointer right here and you scale x negative one and G X axis we have this point right here so whenever I animate it you can see and right here we have the point in there so in this one it will go in that direction just like that but this feature won't work with the more types right here because these types they are just textures it works normally but you cannot use pivot points for textures but if you want to create a left version of this you just have to turn this button on it will flip the sides so if i turn it on you know you can see it's starting from that side now so yeah that's it now next thing we have is the add edge so in the more types if i animate it we have this green edge right here so if i turn it off and on you can see how this looks like you can change the color right here you don't need to go to the materials or add different materials for different stuff let's go to the text editor we have the line 1, line 2, line 3. Now in geometry nodes you can't really hit enter and switch to the next line because I don't know why Blender doesn't have this feature yet. In the line 2 I can type anything I want. You can change the font by going into geometry nodes right here and select your font. And you can scale the text. You can offset it on the Y and the X axis just like that. You can rotate it. If you're not satisfied with these lines kind of text distribution, what you can do is you can shift a and add in a text object edit the text object and make it an object that you like now just hit ctrl a on these visual geometry to mesh what you can do is give all of these different materials i'm gonna hit ctrl j on this this is our text so if i go right here and in there i pick a text object if i pick this you know you can see I have this now and if I turn on the fresh text material it will not get the material data from right here it will give it a fresh material which is this one and now right here just offset it the way you like it just like that and it will work properly now now let's just delete that we don't need it let's remove it from here offset that here you can just go to the text color and give it any color that you want whenever you add one material to an object and then you duplicate that object and try to change the color of that material it will change for both of these objects but i figured out a way to solve that problem without changing the material so if you go to that the text color on this one now and make it blue you can see they have the same material one more cool feature that is very awesome you saw this glow effect in the intro you can go to add in a mesh primitive select that object go to the make object glow and select the torus in there and now in the glow color i'm going to bring that up and make it a red or something it will look very good in cycles it already looks good but you can tweak the material to make it look good for eevee bring that value to zero the glow is disappeared if i bring it up it glows again so you don't need to animate the visibility for these things you just have it all there already so i'm going to remove the glow for now let's remove it delete that and now we have the background so background is basically this thing so if i turn it off and turn on the stroke you can see it's like a neon type of effect i don't know what you call it you can turn on the background with it too and yeah as the same for this one you can change the color and it will be different for both of those now another feature which uh, makes it very cool is the background bevel if i bring that down to zero you can see it bevels the background you have an option for the point count let's say if i make it one you can see it gives us this cool edgy look right there now the pointer line is this object which has these waves and this points at the ends these little points so this is the pointer object if i turn it off and on you can see what it does and then we have the dotted line so if i turn that on it will convert it to kind of the dots that you might want to use and then we have the line color you can change that too 
we have the thickness of the line and we have the pointer bevel so pointer is this object so if i turn the bevel up you can see it will bevel the object to make it smoother and if you make it something like one then it will be edgy just like that i'm gonna make it 15 and bring down the bevel to zero now we have the flip direction this switch is only used if this wave is appearing right here then you can just flip it and it will be right there again now we have a line bevel you might be thinking aren't these the same things no they're not if you go to the edit mode for this and you add in a plane right here you x vertices and you have an edge right here this edge is a line these edge right, edges right here these are pointer lines as long as it's not assigned to the pointer line it will be considered as just a line and these lines are very helpful while creating this kind of composition if i extrude this line along the y axis and now i try to play with this line settings so let's make the line samples to one and bring up this line bevel it will not affect this one because these are separate objects now if i hit two and hit shift e on this you can see we got a cool look on this then we have the flip direction so you can flip the direction for this one too like if it's animating in the wrong way then you can flip the direction then we also have an option for adding a curve in here so let's see how to do that let's get a path curve go to the curve add the curve in here we've got the curve and we have an endpoint editor. So if i change the color we have an endpoint scale you know what it does it scales the endpoint we have waves if i turn it off no waves turn it on we got waves on that then we have the border color border bevel so if i turn that up you can see it bevels the border then here we have the border radius then we have the scale and we have border point count when you bring up the border bevel so these are just edges right there so if we bring up the border point count it will be smoother now now we have background bcd something like that materials right so if you duplicate the same thing shift d y then you have to bring down the text a little bit right so let's uh, offset the text again remember your first background is called a and then you add more and duplicate them or add planes in there these are going to be called b c d e just like that so this one is b so in the b i'm going to add in a material that i like and this can be any logo or uh, image texture or whatever you like then it will animate with it notice how the first one is going a little bit faster and the second one is like delayed which adds a very cool effect to this animation you know both of them are not starting at the same point they have some difference which i really like about it what am i missing now let's see how can we use these in our scenes and um, get some cool results so i have this gopro scene i'm not going to do a full tutorial on that because uh, i don't want to animate it now but i might do a full tutorial on this later with the whole animation so first what you have to do is just uh, bring your 3d cursor here and i'm going to hit shift test selection to cursor then let's just rotate it and make it so that it's facing our camera rotate it around and just hit tab you need to do it like g double x or double y so that it's going in the local direction of this object now if you look at that our line is flipped now if i animate it it's starting from the wrong direction now you can go right here into the pointer line settings and you can turn off the flip direction so now it's flipped back just like that and you can see how this animates let's put on some keyframes and make it so that it starts right there i'm gonna make it zero from here is that a keyframe go to frame 35 i normally do it in 15 frames or you can do it in 20 or something like that if you want it slower and bring that up until it's full right there and insert a keyframe then duplicate the same keyframe and bring it right there to 80 and 100 i'm gonna bring it down to zero just like that and insert a keyframe can see how this animates it's a bit fast right now but if i bring it back a little bit and move around the keyframes it should look good then you can see how this looks like now you can go to the edit mode and if you want to make it a little bit thinner you can just hit shift e and bring these down just like that and then you can go to the object 
right here and turn down the thickness for this so this looks pretty cool now you can go right there into the make object glow and select this object right here then i'm gonna bring up the color to something like this kind of blue and if this object is uh, not glowing what you need to do is just go into the edit mode for that object and select everything and hit shift and on it so the normals will be recalculated and it will work fine look at that this looks pretty awesome now you can change these callouts these animations to whatever you like and there's a lot of effects that you can try here i'm gonna add a lot more features in here and all the future updates for this will be free there's no more charges you just pay one time and you get it forever now you can go to my link in the description and you can purchase it from there for just twenty dollars i'm sure this tool will help you a lot in your projects and it will also help support the channel all right i'll see you in the next one